Hello gang, gather round for story time with old man Joe. So uh, when I was a kid, I was in the Boy Scouts. I'm sure that's not a surprise to anybody. But for anybody who's remotely familiar with the Boy Scouts, you might be familiar with the, uh, the Pinewood Derby, which we did every year. Now, of course, I grew up in a really small town. I know these days the Pinewood Derby is huge. It's this huge, huge event. Uh, it was nothing like that when I was a kid mostly because it was a long time ago, but also because I grew up in a really small town. But we did have the Pinewood Derby. And there was one year that when I entered the Pinewood Derby, you know, my dad and I uh, built the car together. Now, that's true of most Pinewood Derbies. It's usually the dad that does most of the work. But, uh, but this particular year, you know, we worked really hard on it. And um, I learned a, a little lesson by doing this that you kind of have to you have to be specific about what you want in things because I, you know, you're given a block and I drew out on the block the shape of the car and my uncle went and actually like carved it out because he had a, a lathe or whatever you call those things. And no, it was a drill. Anyway, he, he was able to do it. And uh, I kind of just roughly put on there, it's like the shape of a car. I want it to be the shape of a car. And uh, I want to say when I was drawing it with my pencil, like the pencil caught somewhere and it kind of did a little skip. And so when my uncle went and cut it out, of course he did it along the line and it had this weird, weird bump in it. But we were able to smooth the bump down and it kind of actually gave it some really cool curves and we, we, we painted it and lacquered it. It was like this piano black, shiny, beautiful uh, surface and we put a lightning bolt down the side. Um, you know, there, there have been cooler, there have been cooler Pinewood Derby cars, but I was really proud of this one. We put a lot of work into it. I spent, you know, a lot of time with my dad working on it. We did the thing where we put the graphite on the wheels and we, you know, inserted lead weights in there to get it just as, 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 uh, as heavy as it can possibly be without going over. We put some time into it. It was a whole thing. And I thought it was a beautiful little car. So we go to do the Pinewood Derby and anybody who doesn't know, it's basically just a slope and they put a little thing right there and when they release it, the car goes down the hill and there's a finish line, whichever car gets the finish line first obviously wins. So we went through a few rounds and I was really bothered by the fact that there wasn't anything to stop the cars at the end of the ramp. They literally just kind of smacked into a wall. And of course, I was, I was so precious about this car. We'd spent so much time on it and it was pretty and it had that, that sleek, lacquered, clean, I didn't want to mess it up, you know? So uh, it was actually doing really well, too. It had won, like, the first couple of rounds or whatever, and it got down to the final round, and I was excited. I'm like, cool, I'm going to win this thing, right? And so in the final round, it was down between me and one other guy. And I was so nervous about letting it hit that wall that we raced it, and my car was ahead. It was in the lead, and I stopped it. But I had stopped it before it got to the finish line. I didn't realize I was doing that. It hadn't fully crossed the finish line, but I stopped it because I didn't want it to hit the wall. And, and the guys came over and was like, hey, you, you stopped it before it finished the, got through the finish line. That's a, that's a bust. You know, you can't, we can't use that one. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So they did it one more time. And again, mine came in ahead of the other one. But again, I couldn't help myself. I stopped the car and I stopped it before it fully got across the finish line. So I lost. So the other kid won. And, uh, and it was a lesson that I learned as a whatever, 19 year old boy, that um, you, you have to be able to let go of things a little bit or you'll wind up losing it. You have to be able to hold on to things lightly, but firmly. Um, this is true of relationships, this is true of jobs, this is true of dreams. If you cling too tightly to those things, you can wind up losing them. So it's just a little life lesson that I learned when I was a kid. And I feel like there's, uh, you know, some parallels that I always have to kind of relearn that lesson growing up, even today, you know. Um, you have to be willing to give something a little bit of space. And there's a little something to the quasi-Buddhist philosophy of, of being um, disconnected with things or not being uh, encum encumbered by connections, you know, being disconnected in a way. Obviously, you don't want to be, like, disconnected from 
from people and weird and stuff like that. But um, there is something to be said for having that little bit of space, that the boundaries, the distance between yourself and the thing or the people or the relationship or the job or whatever. Sometimes you can be so laser focused on the goal of the thing that you want to do that you wind up missing all the opportunities that come your way that could have been even bigger than the thing that you wanted to do or could have gotten you to the thing you wanted to do uh, faster than the current track that you're on, but you didn't even see them because you're so clinging to that one thing. You know, in a relationship, you can be so afraid of losing somebody that you cling to them and you pester them and you become an annoyance that you wind up losing them. Um, this is a hard lesson to learn. And it's a lesson, like I said, I have to keep learning throughout my life. But I always go back to that, that Pinewood Derby and that mistake that I made, that inability to just let the thing hit the wall. It was going to be fine. And even if, uh, even if it did get a little bit ding, that's just, you know, that's just part of the, that's, that will be part of the memory later on as I picked up that car and looked at it and I saw the ding and I remembered how it hit the wall and how much it bothered me when I was a kid, you know. Um, but now it's not there. I just have a, a second place finish instead. So, um... I just thought I would share that. I think it's, I, I thought that was interesting and I, and I hope that you guys uh, get some kind of value out of that. But uh, old, old man Joe story time. This might be a regular thing. <laughs> uh, but that's it, just a little quick this. Not, not a rant, not anger. I'm not talking about Tesla. I'm just sharing a little life story. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will catch you guys later. Take care.